Hey, 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 Crystal Jordan, be honest in myself, Kevin Davis, we are Music Love Life. What's going on, Yeah, people? we have another ep- I feel good. Do you feel good? Yeah, I was singing the song. <laughs> well, you have your Rockaware shirt on and it's um. buttoned up to the top. Um. Yep. That means I'm feeling good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Grown man stuff. When, yep. I, when I button it, I swear. When you get all the way to the top, I right. like it. Okay. Stay, all right. Stay fitted. That's what's up. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hey. <laughs> you got the Punisher on. Uh, is, is that a Punisher? No, this, oh, that's like Dead Presidents, right? No, this is a uh, rock group called the Misfits. Oh, damn. Misfits. I thought it was... I thought it was the robbers and dead presidents. Mm, that's probably. I mean, it looks like the same yeah, thing, but I don't, I don't know. I, don't, I wouldn't say that's where they got it from. I don't, no, they probably. Yeah, it was just like I think they were being clowns or something with skull caps. When you said okay. dead presidents, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, 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 because that's like that was that was right. that was like a really cool movie that you know doesn't always that, get it. It gets no credit, but it I thought it was a decent movie. It, no, and it really was. It was really deep. Like you guys remember Chris Tucker? Yeah. Like it was a really deep. Lorenz Tate. Yeah. The acting yeah. wasn't great, and that's probably why. Right, because the storyline was Woodbine heavy. That, yeah. I think. Bokeem Woodbine, I saw, and he just, he was here doing um, press for the movie that um, is about Rosa Parks. Um, I can't remember the, t- the name of it right now, but TV One did a really big premiere here. Bokeem Woodbine, who always played like these tough roles, has the skin of a newborn baby. Can I just tell you that his face looks like he has a facial like every week. It was so strange to see because I expect him to be this like hard. He always played those really mean characters. You remember him right. in Jason's lyric? Right. He mm-hmm. scared the crap out of me. But he's like he's he's like very manic. He's, he's like metrosexual. Who would have thought? He's probably vegan. Mm. He probably is. Yeah, vegan. So vegan people have great skin. No, he definitely. I no, yeah, it's no beyond impurities. vegan. It's beyond vegan. This is it's this is money. He got money. True. He's money. been in a lot of movies. I hadn't seen him recently. Well, they're kind of be ish. But I mean, I hadn't even seen him in B movies. He kind of like disappeared because he was like that bad guy for a while. Yeah, he was like the the black the the black Hollywood. He never really bad played the, the lead part though. He always played like the supporting role. He was a good. Movies. He's a good actor though. I don't say he was a good actor. He's yeah. a good actor. So I mean, I'm looking for first of all that movie. We're going to talk about it next week, but I'm excited to see. It basically tells the other side of Rosa Parks' story. I can't remember the name of it right now because I did not have a chance to go to the premiere because I was at Michael Montana's listening session that I did uh, media wrangling for. Yeah. Um, it was dope. Shout out, Michael. What up? Oh, yeah. I wanted to, um, I wanted to, I actually was trying to get the audio and I forgot to bring some of the audio from that event, but, but it was, it was interesting to hear the story, but um, I definitely want to make sure that we talk about that, the Rosa Parks story, just because we never think about with civil rights leaders, you know, that went through the things that they went through back in the day. What if they were here? Like, what if Martin Luther King was in these times, do we think he would have been able to be as effective? <laughs> I mean, with the social media and just the way we look at people and tear people apart. And, you know, if we were looking at, okay, Rosa Parks on the bus, was, who is she sleeping with? Like, who's her husband? And who is, is, is he cheating on? Like, I mean, we, it, the whole message behind the civil rights movement yeah, but you know what? been thrown off. Like, well, I mean, if you're worried about naysayers or haters or something like that, I mean, Martin Luther King had those back then. But a and they whole were black, other, right? But but not a lot of everybody them were black. knew about that. But though. but it Most wasn't a lot, of, a lot of them. A lot of black people were like Martin Luther King stirring up damn trouble. I don't <laughs> like who he think he is, right. right? All that type of shit. But yeah. it didn't get to be as widespread because yeah, there was because no people didn't media. know. Like think about it, if you were not in Birmingham or, or Atlanta. You didn't know about some of the things that were happening. There was no way to Only talk about. Only the paper, and then that's like yeah, you know, it's so not the far. Same. Yeah, the paper was you know come out what once a week. I don't know if even don't know. right at that much at that time. So he wasn't getting did, front front page shit anyway. So no, and it was you black have to go paper to page twenty. No, no, it wasn't like that. So I just wonder. I just thought about that. Like sometimes I think that all the social things that we become you know, it's caught up in take away from the actual message of different movements. You know, I think even the Black Lives Matter, like. People 
tear things apart to the point that we get focused on things that don't really matter and we miss out on the bigger picture. That's happening with everything. Sound like 2018. Everything. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm, I, I do. I do appreciate the fact that we can even have the conversation, and even if you, even if your opinion or your view is invalid, then you can still lay it out on the table, and we can chop it up. Right. right? We can look under it. We can say, well, what is this really Who's about? No, so <laughs> you mean social media? Yeah. Oh, I hate it. I, everybody's opinion does not matter. <laughs> Most people's opinion don't matter. Doesn't matter. Why, why, why does someone's true, opinion not matter? Because some people are not qualified to have an opinion in th- certain things. Well, I wouldn't say it quite like that. Um, some people may not be. It, it, they're, they're, first of all, most people are sheep anyway, in my opinion. Most people follow what they hear. So what happens on social media is you have a lot of people that are passionately arguing a point they have no idea what the real point they're is. They're not even arguing the point. They're yeah. copying and pasting the point. They're copying and pasting and adding their own thing on top, their own caption to it. And they don't even really understand the 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 problem at hand. Like they have not, they don't have a real understanding of what's going on. It's not even, they don't have context. They don't. They have a line a hot one. A picture. A hot, you have a hot, a hot picture, line. Like, or, a, or a provocative yeah. picture. And they use that as proof of something, but they have no they have no idea what the context of any of that was. They'll have one line and it'll be a paragraph that they supposed right. they are supposed to have read. Or there'll be a picture, but you don't see the video. Right. So you don't know what happened before or after that picture was snapped. Very true. There's right. no context. And I don't think you're qualified to speak about certain things. With, I mean, you ha- there's a, the reason why we do this show is because of our connection to the industry, our connection to... Uh, being on the ground in Atlanta, a place where a lot of these types of things happen. Right. So I'm not saying that our opinion matters any more than anybody else's. Well, and hopefully with having a show, doesn't. we're <laughs> we're, no, we're actually like doesn't. right studying the information. <laughs> to me, I've always been. I was always taught, you know, as a as a writer. If you don't know your opponent's viewpoint, you really can't know yours. So if you don't know why you're you disagree with that person, you don't really have a firm argument on what you believe. You know what I mean? So you really have to understand. You really need to understand your opponent's view viewpoint more so than yourself because you need to know why I don't agree. I can't just say I think you're stupid. Why? Why don't you, you know what? You got to know what it is that you're disagreeing with, and that's my problem with the Trump hate. It's like. But do you really know what he said? But you know what? And that's, are we just focusing on his tweets? That's the thing that I love most about social media is that it allows intellectualism to come to the forefront. Sometimes. Right? It allows those who can articulate their statements and beliefs, it allows them to really lay it out, provide the facts, where's the links, you get to show your receipts. I don't, I don't even see, any see that. that. I, I don't you, know see why, that. you know why I don't see it? Because the hundred other people that have no idea what's right. going on, they're just saying things. Right. They're just repeating either hatred or half opinions or hotlines or things whatever. Things that are provo- and salacious the, and get the people going. I'll, I'll agree with you on that. I think yeah. that's the worst side of social media because some people will argue a point of view that isn't even the topic of conversation. Like if you misspell a word and then they go in about you're not educated and then it turns into, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That, right. That's what I see a lot of the time. I think that's most of it. Before we get into this discussion, because I definitely want us to, to revisit this, because there was a post that we, we're going to talk about in a minute that Malcolm Jamal Warner put up. Before we got, we got questions yeah. from viewers or listeners, right? Did you send me the video? Yeah, I sent it. Okay. All right. Proceed. Let's go. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> While we're answering this question, I guess I'll be doing some work. <laughs> All right. So this is a listener submitted question. This one is for Kevin, actually. So oh, right. I'm going to throw it on screen for you, Kevin. You can read okay. it. <laughs> Kevin question from First Alley Cat. All right. Where do women belong? As in relationships. As in relationships, jobs, and government. Tread lightly. Hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Let me see. Let me see. Um, I, I think that women belong where they are strongest where wherever you're most in, in relationships jobs and government i think you should be wherever you're most comfortable and confident everybody ain't asked, built for everything but she asked where do you think that they're they belong so where do you what do you mean where do i think where do you, i think where what I where think do you person, see women i think that a person man or woman mm-hmm. should be wherever their strengths are okay all right 
So basically, if, you're, if math is not your strength, then you do not, not need to be an accountant. Okay. So what if a woman and her strength is not cleaning or cooking, mm-hmm. and yours is? Then you're okay doing those things while she does I, the I, other side. I'm okay with that. I know a lot of men who cook and a lot of women who can't. Yes, that is true. That's I'd true. rather eat the dude's food. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. I, right. You rather right. You well. Whoever can cook is whose food I'd prefer to eat. Well. You're not eating a guy's food, right? Why not? Is that what do you mean? I'm a guy and I can cook. Right, but you don't say you would be eating your food because you said... He's, dude- like, he's not like inviting dudes over and offering them dinner like, hey, come over <laughs> dinner. <laughs> no. like that. He said like, I don't want to eat the dude's food. Like, are you open to you a know, relationship with a man or a woman? No, no, okay, I'm not okay. saying that. What about but I have, like, dinner like my homeboys, I have hit them up like, yo, I'm, I'm really? grilling or I made some this, I made some that. But that's what you, you cook. You cook a lot. Yeah. Like you're, so you're like, I enjoy it. Do you it's set the table? Kind of therapeutic for me. Do you set the table? You're, he's uh, he's no, baiting I'm you. Not really. Yeah, he's trying to. I'm not gonna. So do that. Uh, so, you, what do you think about his answer though? About the women thing. I mean, I mean, I think I, mean, I know he, you have a, a very safe answer, but I think he's right though. <laughs> You're no. a proponent of gender the gender gap and pay thing, right? <laughs> no, but I I I think that women, from a professional standpoint, should be able to do whatever job they're qualified to do. You know, that should everyone. Yeah, I think. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah, if they're qualified. Yeah, yeah. We're not talking about pay, though. See, I asked us specifically about pay because I know that's something me and you have gone back and yeah. So if you if I'm doing the job of a, a senior exec, a, account exec, then I should get the same pay as a man nope. doing that. Mm, see, there, there we go with that again. That makes absolutely that, no that, sense. That's, you're you're never going to hear that argument anywhere. What are you talking about? I, I just don't think that's a real thing. I think that's a fake thing. What do you what, mean a women fake getting thing? Getting the same pay as a man? No, that argument that a senior executive vice president is arguing that she's getting paid less than a man would be as, as a senior vice president executive. Why? You're both because getting paid too much. Because yeah, <laughs> I, like we have to understand, we're talking about oh, you look at numbers all that's, day. And that's you get, the Monique versus Dave Chappelle right. thing. Like right I don't think anybody who's making sixty dollars an hour is complaining. Like you know, Jeff down the down the hall, he's making sixty five dollars an hour. What kind of shit? Is, like they're not doing that now. Now I don't know. Let's go to a call center. Maybe. No, she's not. Because they don't. They're no, already getting paid way too much. Go to that, a call that, center. That's not true. I guarantee you, there's somebody in there talking about. I make ten fifty, and Jeff makes ten seventy five. I don't she's agree. Pissed. I do not agree. In fact, there was there was a there was uh, the actress Octavia Spencer. There was a uh, white actress, and I'm I'm wrong for not knowing the name of the lady because I didn't know we were, we were going to talk about this. But she talks about being paid less. If I make seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, and a man makes seven hundred and eighty thousand, then she's an idiot. If she complains. I want the same amount. Get the fuck out of here. I am not. That is not a real argument. argument. That's that not a real argument. Mm, that is not fair to say that it doesn't matter if you're making it a, a wage because that's she's acceptable. making way more than she should for what she does. She is not. Who who dictates that? Me. It's my opinion. Anyway, that's why you know, Kevin was asked the question and not be honest. If you honest. make ten dollars and fifty cents, yes, I get. I can understand why you're mad. You it, don't make thirty five cents across more. the board. But if Just you're making seven hundred thousand dollars for that job, it come doesn't on, you're matter. Being but if someone else is doing the same exact job and getting paid more, fair is fair. This is a thing about mediocrity. That's what it really is. It's about what? mediocrity. Women are women who are gonna who want to just be mediocre, mediocre are complaining. They're mediocre. What? No, because women who are executive, they don't give it like they don't give a shit. I'm making yes, way, they I'm do. making way more than most dudes in the world. Period. They like, want to I make, make more. more than ninety percent of the guys in the world. They want to make more. Trust there are little me. kids in India who eat who make that fifty dollars. Nothing to do with that the has fact that they're to do with no, it doesn't. You have to be self aware. That is a that is, first of all that is a very here, emotional here, statement, no, which, is, which I don't not. expect men to do. It's not emotional at all. Let me explain. It is emotional because all that. Matter. I don't care about a kid in India. That has Why? nothing to do with my. You don't check. care about a kid in India? No, I do not. It has nothing to do that with sounds, my. Check. That doesn't sound emotional. That sounds retarded. It does You're telling me you don't retarded. care about a kid in India? No, that fuck ha- that little hungry, hungry kid. That's not what I'm saying. He, it has nothing to do. He really is that shitting in a hole. To he do. literally is shitting in a hole. You don't care about that kid. That has nothing Come to do on. with my check. Mediocrity. Being less than a man's let me, let me, check. Let me make my point. Mediocrity. The problem is mediocrity because what happens is a woman that's about to make mm, fifteen dollars an hour, she's settled with a, a mediocre life. Her life is going to be mediocre, so she wants fifteen more cents or a dollar more because she's so damn mediocre that it matters. But if she was making sixty dollars an hour, she's already a hard she's a, a hard charger. She's somebody who's in self self starter. She has initiation. She's not worried about those little pennies because she's going to make it through her merit. The ones who don't have any merit, they're mediocre. They're I, complaining about two think, more dollars an hour. I actually hour. disagree uh, totally I with you. I, I don't know if I want to stand on that because basically what mm-hmm. you just said is that poor people are lazy. 
No. Well, I don't even know about that, but, you, but, but, but you're actually wrong okay. because a woman who's making less, who's settled for a mediocre life is going to be less likely to argue. That woman that's busting her ass is going to be the one like, no, I've busted my ass to get here. Right. I am going to demand so, that you pay me the same amount. How, She's the one that's going to take Who are you demanding court. to pay you more? No, 50, no person working for Answer $10 an hour is going to be able to take someone to who, court. Who are you demanding should pay you more? Somebody who owns a company? company. Fuck you, it's my company. You don't want to work here, don't. No, but with corporations, it's not like that. HR dictates that things have to be done HR a certain way. Is, uh, works well, you for know who? What happens, you know what happens in those regards? There has to be unity, and there's not right. a lot of unity, right? Like, for example, I remember uh, the show Friends. Yes. I think, I think they, like, boycotted or they decided, you know what, we're not going to record until everyone is paid well, until mm-hmm. we all agree mm-hmm. between all seven of those actors. Right. Right? right? And so in, in a lot of other cases, that's not happening. That's true. Why? And, that's and true. Make it so bad with this being Black History Month, right? I, I had I went to go get some tires. I went to go get some tires. I pulled up at the tire shop, and I was talking to the owner, this mm-hmm. Nigerian guy. And we got to go in back and forth, and you so know, this was about. not a, a no. This is reputable a, tire spot. This is oh this is one of those. Yes, this is a used tire spot. Right, okay. You, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this was a used tire spot. <laughs> like you don't six, you six tried dollars. have a bought used tires. He tried sixty dollars. It. Sixty dollars for the tire. I didn't try it. You. I was correct. He tried you, Kevin. I was correct. I didn't try it. <laughs> he said it Nigeria. Was, I just want right. to make sure we hey, put it in perspective. No shade in that. Like, like, None. Like and I. I just so you Carry know, those on. places still make six figures. I'm just saying, if you, if you have a problem with that, means you're the, the classist. I just said it's, a used tire, it's the, the used tire <laughs> spot. He said, so we, just so we know, this is not a reputable spot. <laughs> it's not bad or good. <laughs> reputable is bad. If it's, if it's not reputable, it's I want to see bad. the business license. I, w- I would like to see, I would like to see <laughs> their you books. You see how he just destroyed my whole story here? <laughs> Kevin, like continue with your story. You went to get some tires. Well, right. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, the point, of, the point of what he said was the only thing that white people tend to have over black people mm-hmm. is that they have unity. What most white people, he said, they don't run faster, they aren't smarter, they don't jump higher, the women aren't more beautiful, none of those things. It's <laughs> all, but they stick together. And uh, black Americans. Have you ever heard a, a, a white basketball player complain about the gender, I mean, the, the race pay, pay gap? Just wondering. <laughs> now you said jump higher or faster. I just thought about basketball and why you never hear a white player like I'm holding out for more money in the NBA. Like I, you never hear that. It's just odd. Just an odd little thing. I don't know. I don't think. I mean, I think that's totally that. irrelevant. What, Are, is there another question? <laughs> be honest. Well, <laughs> there's, there's a question for you, Crystal. Okay. That's so good. here, here, I just want to you know show the the, the person, give them their credit or whatever. Yay! At hey, Brittany. Ver- on stage. At the very bottom, she says, "I'm curious what Crystal's opinion is okay. of this." So right. we're gonna play this video. To Kevin. Ladies, Kevin y'all agree with this? Stop disrespecting these women and asking them to marry you with these one carat rings. If you can't afford a ring, three carat or better, approximately 35 on them, you can't afford a wife. It's bigger than being materialistic. It's about being able to see with your third eye. It's about being able to read in between the lines. Marriage is a business, whether y'all like it or not. Disney messed y'all up with the happily ever after phrase. You can't start a business without some type of, some sort of financial backing. What can we do for each other? If you don't have enough money to spend on an inanimate object such as a wang, you ain't ready to be invested in the business, i.e. marriage. Get back to the drawing board. This is the inanimate object I gave my wife. 2003, this is when I gave her this, <laughs> okay? I was 19 years old, and I gave her this ring, and I said, will you be my wife? This ain't got no carrots. This has got one diamond-like glass plastic composite. This thing costs... $99. It's gold plated. The gold is going away. The the piece of glass is still holding there. This wedding ring that I wear, I got from Aldo for $9.99. I kid you not. That woman ain't said nothing about love. Marriage is going to be a business for you. And your third eye is going to be used for dating apps like the other two eyes that you have. Because you're going to be single. Just because a man buys you a $3,500 ring don't mean your marriage is going to work. You can get cheated on with a ring that costs $3, $3,500, million. Love is not measured in carrots. Here's what you're forgetting. In all the Tyler Perry movies, 
movies, the bad guy, he always can pay the $3,500 ring. And the guy who's working and mowing the lawn with a terrible braids on his head, he's the guy that loves you. Can he afford that? No, but he's going to treat you right. How many Tyler Perry movies have you seen? Don't you know about Love It Ain't about Disney movies? It's about Tyler Perry movies. Tyler Perry movies tell you the way. Take the brother who loves you, who's working by the sweat of his brow, shirt off, sweat beads. I don't have much, girl, but I love you. Our marriage is built on these two rings. Come on, give me a hug and tell me you love me. Okay. Um, very good question. And, and, you know, I know we have a lot of fun on the show. I definitely have a lot of fun because I'm outnumbered and the guys are always giving me a hard time. But for the most part, I agree with Kev on stage. The only thing is this. Just because a man is broke does not mean that he's going to be a good guy. There are cheaters that come in broke and cheaters that come in paid. And just because a man is hard up on his luck does not mean he's going to be the good guy. And I think a lot of women think that. A lot of men argue that. Like, that's an argument all the time. Well, he has money. He probably doesn't care about you. Well, I know a lot of broke dudes that run the same whack game as guys with money. I don't know how it works because they have less to um, work with, but they do. I mean, the fact that, you know, I know every girl out there knows a friend that's sleeping with a guy who's absolutely broke, who's cheating on her and treating her bad. So a man's bank account does not dictate what he will do for you, right? Now, I do think that if a man wants to marry you, he should want you to have the best. Now, and that's his best. So whatever he's able to do, if he's able to do 3500, God bless him. If he's not able to do 3500, God bless him as well. It doesn't it doesn't dictate the number. It just dictates his willing to sacrifice. So I think if you have a guy who makes good amount of money and he's like, I don't care about spending money on her. I'm not doing that. Then that to me is a problem. If he doesn't think of you as a priority. But if he finds you a priority and just feels like he doesn't, you know, he doesn't have that much money, I don't think that means that he's not ready to get married. I think a husband should be willing to provide and put his family first. And that means he should want his wife to be happy. And, and if, you know, he knows that whoever marries me, will know that, again, <laughs> I was married before, and my husband was like that. Like, he wanted, he wasn't into certain things, but he knew I was. Just like I might not have been into certain things, but if you know, he is. So if he knows that I like that, I think he would, if he really loves me and he's the man for me, he will do his best. But his best is all I would require. So, yes, you know, like I said, it's fun to 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 laugh and joke on the show, but um, I do think that a man's intent towards you will be shown through the sacrifice that he will make for you. But do, please don't get it twisted and think just because a brother is broke that he's going to be good because there are some broke assholes out there just like there are some rich assholes. The only difference is when the broke asshole leaves, you're probably going to have a negative bank account. And when the rich asshole leaves, you may not. So, and so you're okay um, with a $100 Walmart ring for your wedding ring? If I was dating a man that that was the best was he could, no. I didn't say that. I I can neither would you, confirm would you, nor deny. Would you, would you date a man who could only I get you? I have never dated Day a man. Eight. I've never dated a man that that was the best he could do. By choice? Not yet. No, not not dated, but been serious with. Because I'm sure you've dated guys who can only afford Walmart rings. No, I haven't. You've never even dated a guy that can only afford a Walmart ring? No. How? I mean, okay. You it's really have every date. guy that you... Oh, that, that's what I mean. Like, serious. Okay, no, not so. serious date. So, no. but you... You'd be okay with it if it were the right guy. That was a no. If it was the right guy, I think that he would um, want to. Um, <laughs> wow. Hey, I love how we always get Crystal caught up and she starts stuttering. <laughs> right. Oh, so, uh, uh, no, uh, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 I, I mean, and shit. Let me see. If this, if this was the right guy and I knew. I, I mean, I already know your type. So, like. Right. If if it's, I don't, I don't, do I need to say it out uh, loud or you want me to keep to myself? No, I mean you can say it. Okay, so football saying. build type, football build type. Yes. So large guy, muscular. Even mm -hmm. if it don't have to be like chiseled, but just muscular. Yeah. Right. Tall. Yeah. Probably I would say six two, six three. Yeah. Or taller. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, well endowed. <laughs> you couldn't say yes. I mean, I, I asked you to join to put this out here. Okay, yeah. Oh, you, you embarrassed now? 
I wasn't expecting oh to go there. Okay. Yeah. okay. So a guy comes to you. He's all of that. Plus, he's a great dad to his kids that are now grown. So okay. they're not even kitty kid, kids no more. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's a philanthropist where he can be. Good person. But, ambitious. Yeah, but all not, those things are important as well. He just kind of makes like I was superficial with external hold things. On, I said philanthropist. What I meant was volunteer. Because he, he's, <laughs> he's got a philanthropist heart. <laughs> so he but he can, down to the church. Right. But he can <laughs> only really, he can only really kind of do this. Right. Because you can't be a philanthropist if you can only afford a hundred dollar ring. Right. But I mean, he's doing all those things. He's hitting all the spots, literally and figuratively. Okay. Oh, that's a good Walmart one. ring is all he got though. Okay. So what I would just say. And it's, it's, he's not giving me that shit about, I'm trying to build a business. I can't afford it. He has nothing. He just, he just had, he, he goes to work every day. Mm-hmm. He's not going to get fired. Mm-hmm. But he's not Hard ever going to get a, he's never going to get a promotion either. Oh my goodness gracious! He's in Lord. his he's in his life career, and he has the Walmart ring. But he really loves you. Well, maybe we don't need rings. Maybe we don't need a ring. So you just hide the fact that y'all have, like you're just going <laughs> to no, hide it. I mean, we no, just no. do something. He different. really wants you to wear. His Walmart you. ring because it means something you to him. This is what he can afford. He's like, I want my wife to have a pretty. What do you say? No, Diamond like. I'm going to throw you a bone. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. How please. about, because you're at the Walmart, <laughs> just because the Walmart is overshadowing like, the ring. Okay. Right? So I'm, I'm going to throw you a bone. How about y'all just get a, a tattooed ring? Okay. I can do that. How about that? Thank you, Kevin. You get a tat. Thank you, Kevin. So you're doing that. Yeah, I would do that. I would. I would want you to be happy if that's what if that if that guy could make you happy. I would. If he could make me happy, I yeah. would. I, no, I would not want to wear the Walmart ring. I don't want to. do It's that. not going to say Walmart on it. No, but it looks like <laughs> it. I saw it. Did you see it? Did you see the the picture of I'm it? I'm not sure that was from Walmart, but for ninety nine dollars, no, there was, there was stage, another. No, there was it. no, but there was another ring going around that showed that. No, I mean, now, now let me also say this: when I was younger, my ex husband proposed to me with a ring. I think he paid $1,500 for it. but So that wasn't a big, it wasn't a huge glacier, but... It was $1,500 big. But I'm just saying we were in our 20s. So if I was in my 20s, I probably would do something different. But I, I now I just be like, babe, let's just don't get a ring. It's okay. We're just going to get a tattoo. Hmm. Yeah, it's all good. I think love is love. But, I'm, but my thing is just, I hate when men act like, especially men who don't have much money, they assume that all rich men are just, oh, he's going to cheat on you. It's broke dudes cheating too. Like, I mean, let's just be real. That you, you know, you can never assume that because of what a person does, their character is in line with either how much money they do or don't have. Most people cheat. Yeah. So I'm now now Not guys, most people. Most it's people cheat. It's really uncomfortable when the guy you're with is cheating and he's broke. Ladies, I'm just saying Ooh. that's uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, that's uncomfortable. I feel bad for women getting cheated on by a broke dude. That is really uncomfortable. So I'm just saying, if you're okay with being cheated on, there's like no concessions. Then you that. would probably want to just go for a guy that has more money. You might as well. My point. Just be, be a gold digger and one that you know you're attracted to. That's another thing. I know girls are getting cheated on guys that are ugly and broke. I don't know mm. if you're. I think mm. if you're okay with being cheated on, then I don't know if there are a lot of women that I don't are okay know if with the amount of on. money that someone has is necessarily your problem. It is though, but, but that because a lot of women would rather be provided, which we found in our poll, if you guys remember, a lot of women would rather be provided for than anything else. That's their that's their deal breaker as someone that provides. That's why I told you the other day that y'all saying dick is free, but that's not really what you want. So when you say dick, you're talking about I, yeah, we, support. We, yeah. yeah. I agree. Mm-hmm. But just, you know, again, don't assume because he's busted that he's a good, a good man. That was a very eloquent answer. I'll give you that. Oh, that was you see how I, mean? I was expecting something more materialistic. You actually surprised me. Yeah, decent. Yeah. Hey, although, although once we asked a couple of questions, the house of cards blew up. But, <laughs> but no, but... I mean, I'll be honest. I, I, I don't want to wear it, but I, I, believe do, that, I would be good to him and love him. I would get a tattoo or a pendant, a love pendant. But a penance cost. I, I believe that both things were authentic. You you were yeah. telling the truth when you I gave would. your statement, and you were also telling your truth when you said you wouldn't wear the Walmart shit, but you'll get a tattoo. Yeah, I feel I, that. I hope Brittany. I hope you. Uh, is it was it Brittany? I think Brit it was Renee. Brit, Brit Renee. So thanks for the question. And I do think that women need to. Um, you know, you, I think women just need to know what they want because some women. <laughs> <laughs> I hate y'all. I hate you all. <laughs> anyway. One more time. <laughs> what the fuck? If women knew what they wanted. Uh, they know what they want. Seriously. Do you want to be, do you, what? what is a deal breaker for you anyway? Oh, man. Please, 
We, 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 we welcome questions. Thank you. Thank you, you for the questions. No, we welcome questions. If you guys have questions that you want to send in and you want to send in an anonymous question, because I think I have, um, for next show, we have an anonymous relationship question that came in. So you can definitely send in questions. Yes, we'll anonymous. be able to tear into the... Anon- we, can, we, can, we can definitely make sure that it's anonymous if you don't want um, us to say who the question is for. But if you also want us to give you a shout out, feel free to, to send in questions with your name and your social media so we can shout you out on our recaps. Yep. And you can give that to us through Facebook, through, uh, if you go to Music Love Life Show, you can go to our contact us. There's actually a yeah, form you can fill out. You can put a fake, you can put a fake name there if you want. So we'll, yes. we don't even know who you are at all. We want to know who you are so we can give you some love. I want you to ask the raunchy, ridiculous stuff. So I don't care if you tell me who you are. Cause <laughs> I, I see nobody ask me a question. I guess y'all are afraid There's of There's a my... reason for that. Wait, what do you think? Because I think people are um, convinced of your opinion. It's quite apparent. Because I'm going to give it whether they ask or not. <laughs> Probably so. <laughs> okay. You definitely give it on both of ours. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but you know what? We got to say thank you to our to our listeners because we actually reached 100 subscribers. Yep. Yeah. We got started late in the game with YouTube. So we definitely, yeah, hand clap there. We'll um, definitely need more people to subscribe. So if you are listening Please share this with people um, that are in your circle so we can get more people to listen in and, you know, get be us a part of our discussions. To, and get us closer to monetization so that we can make this all be better for everyone. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So, all right. First of all, can we talk a little bit about what's happening on tomorrow for the Super Bowl? Yeah. What about it? Why is there no hype? Like, there's not, like, it's been the most quiet. Cricket Super Bowl ever Like I've never Seen a Super Bowl Where there's I don't even see like Two reasons Okay Two reasons I feel like one Kaepernick Okay He kind of muted The whole season Everybody started Turning off them TVs Because it's a football period Wow right? Like I really haven't Watched football All season Are you a big football fan though? Mm, well, I played football, so no. I get it. Okay, no. But are you as far a big fo- do you watch what? football like, like every year? Every, like, are you like a big every football? weekend? Yeah. No, I'm not an every weekend. Okay, so what about you? I watch Sports Center, but I don't, I don't, I don't catch all the games. But to, to guys that are like diehard football fans, like you know, that have like teams that they're going for, mm-hmm. like I don't know, I just haven't heard. And it could be because we're in Atlanta, and last year we were part of the Super Bowl, and everybody was excited about that. I think it has to do with the teams. I mean, obviously, as you know, we recorded this the day before the Super Bowl. You're going to hear this right. a few days after the Super Bowl, so <laughs> we don't know who won yet. But I think the the problem is the teams. Um, I think that the Kaepernick thing did play a part because I didn't watch football really this year at all either. And you are a big, are you? A bigger I, I was person? a few years ago, okay. but I've, it's been waning. And then last year with the twenty eight to three flip around at halftime thing right. that happened to the Falcons, right. it's, yeah. I've kind of been on fuck the Falcons anyway. Oh, and no. then, and then, hold on, bad. let me be for real with you. It's really the Patriots are. I almost said the Patriots are Donald Trump. They nobody. Do really, people feel that way because no. of the name? I think that people are just tired of the fucking Patriots. Like they're they the most winning. hated. They're the most hated team. And well, we know they pay the refs. I mean, it's no secret. The only team hated more than the Patriots are the Cowboys. Well, that's because they're just they usually win. Who? The Patriots or the yeah, Cowboys? The Patriots. Well, the, the Cowboys used to. Yeah, but the Patriots have won on some crazy. Shit every time Like there was one time I don't know if you heard about it Where they were Actually calling They were had They had microphones And they were recording things That the other line was saying So they could Memorize what their plays were So that wow. when they saw A certain formation come in They would call it down To their mm-hmm. defensive captain He would he would audible the defense Like that's the first thing I remember happening That was a few years ago mm-hmm. And they had the deflate gate thing Like there's been so, so were much So they not penalized yes, for that? The Patriots have The Patriots have what? Five rings? I think so And Every well, ring Brady has, has a scandal. Every scandal. ring has a scandal attached to it. Yeah, so Every Kevin one. just called the Patriots Trump. That was no, I don't know about that. That's pretty deep. I mean, but they're, I, mean they're, I think the people do feel there is some type of connection. No one, to they, that. they won, but no one likes them. Yeah, <laughs> but but there there are plenty of Trump supporters. So that's that's not it. There are plenty of Patriots supporters too. Yeah, there are. But it's, like you say, I think it's just the fact that nobody thought the Eagles were going to be there. They have a backup quarterback. Right. The only thing they really had was defense. So it's like nobody's excited about the game because they're well, not excited me, about the team. I'm teams. not ever really excited about the game. I'm always excited about the halftime performances. Right. So, of course, Beyonce, I was ecstatic, you know, a few years ago when she performed. It was absolutely amazing. Eh, amazing? It was amazing. Oh, no, it was amazing. Kevin, you thought good. it was amazing? He did. Yeah. He's a part of the Beehive, and he's honest. I forgot. And I'm be honest. 
you're you're not honest when I'm it comes very, to Beyonce. Very to Beyonce. Honest. But then Lady Gaga, I actually was really upset about the way people treated Lady Gaga after her performance. I thought her performance was amazing. People were talking about her being a little bit chubby, and that was just absolutely ridiculous. Like she gave a, she came down out of the sky. Chubby she played who? the piano. I know, that's, like right, that's like not a black person ridiculous. Thing. But um, I think that. This year with Justin Timberlake, because usually the the halftime performance is a big part of the hype right. leading up to it. Like Katy Perry, mm-hmm. you know, people were excited about her. She had Missy come out. It was and and, and you know, J, Justin Timberlake may do something amazing, but I think there's just because this this being Justin Timberlake doing Super Bowl after you know what happened years ago with him and Janet. I think people just aren't. I think that Super Bowl took a chance on having him perform after they were both banned and I don't think people are really supporting it. And they I think they've banned. been they were never banned. Well they, well Janet was she was C B S yeah no, they that was did. that was something black people made up. She was never banned. Now Justin Timberlake was never banned. You sure? Yes. I'm gonna Google that. Google it. Google that. That was never a thing. Okay, well if we're wrong, we'll say we're wrong. But I think that they've been very safe with not going over the top with Justin Timberlake ads and pushing this performance. I think they, they've yeah. been kind of, you know, they've erred on the side of, of safety, which to I me I haven't is, seen one ad. I haven't seen one ad either. For and I guarantee if show. it had been Bruno Mars or someone else, we would have seen ads. And I mean, literally, it's just quiet. It's this crickets. Is, this is probably just because Justin Timberlake's coming out with a new album. It is. And he probably, they probably his label probably paid for this to happen and it's not organic. It's definitely not organic. But, I don't feel you know, like, I don't even feel like you know, Super Bowl feels like one of the most American events. It ties everyone in together. I can remember watching Super Bowl halves because, like I said, I don't really watch the entire game all the time. I'll, I'll be right. honest, but people are excited about just the commercials, the hype leading up to it. Like people aren't talking about this Super Bowl. I don't know what's. I don't know what Justin the Timberlake is. is not really an artist for white people, hmm. so they're not behind him. Black people are kind of like on the Kaepernick thing, and they're kind of like, fuck these teams. And also they're like, well, is he going to bring Janet Jackson out? Like, people and, are still, so yeah. there are some people that are still feeling yeah, I like agree. he should do that. I so, think he doesn't really have a home right now. I don't think Justin Timberlake has a home right now. He's kind of suspended in. Yeah, because, I mean, he's got a, a dope video out. I don't know, the one with the little yeah, robot yeah, in it? Yeah, the yeah. shit is dope. It's, it's a filthy, right? I don't know, but it's a, it's a, it's a yeah. dope video. The song yeah. is good. So, no, But Justin Timberlake also said something on Twitter that was... Kind of, he, um, he received a little backlash at, so he wasn't. I'm talking about just uh, yeah, uh, to Jesse Williams, yeah. but remember that wasn't really a, that wasn't really bad. It people, wasn't people bad. Were they took sensitive it out of, they as took fuck. It, they took it out of yeah. context, but still, I do think that people are kind of there. That there's been the cultural appropriation term thrown around about right. his name quite a bit. Right. So that's what I'm saying. You don't really have a home. White people never really, white people, white, no, white girls like him. him. Yeah, white girls loved him. But nobody else really fucks with him. Well, that's, I you mean, sometimes all you need is white girls. But then black people aren't, aren't, aren't <laughs> saying, hey, this is, this is dope. So right. white they're girls are like. they're not co-signing us because white girls are waiting on Yeah, they're waiting on black co-sign. people to say. Right. Hmm. So, so check this out. White girls Talking like the Kardashians. Okay, yeah, so check this out. I'm, I'm looking at Snopes.com. Right for and I just did a search for is Janet banned from the Super Bowl? Right. Um, there's this statement here, and and I'm kind of quick reading. Although there is no evidence that Jackson was not officially banned from future Super Bowl performances by the NFL, the singer was blacklisted by Viacom, the parent company of MTV. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're, we're both totally... we're both right, I guess. Uh, they weren't. She wasn't banned, but Viacom. Is a major player. Yeah, for her to be blacklisted, media. and that and that really is. I mean, that's a reopen that old wound. But yeah, that was really unfair. Like, wow, Viacom, that's super, super unfair. Yeah, but but um, I just besides you guys being wrong on that, I was also wrong, <laughs> and I'm willing to admit it. I I did not realize that the Migos were in fact ready for stardom. I didn't know. You made the statement last See, week, and now, I said, have you "No." Woke, have you become? Well, are you now woke? Well, I have. I are you have woke to, admit, to me, go? I saw the video stir fry, oh. and and immediately what yeah. I thought of was, "Okay, these guys get it. If, yeah. if they don't get it, somebody in, on in, in quality control, yeah. somebody gets it over there." Well, quality control has always got it. Yeah, but this is different than the stuff that they've been doing before. Because to me, this is like. Um, you know, they, at the end of the video, they even show like the the outtakes or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like they're willing to show 
Yeah. The corny part of it. They're yeah. willing to show the, you know, like when people are like, oh, they just sold out. Yeah, well, we're showing y'all. We sold out. This is this is a video where we're going to have fun and we're going to pretend like we're Japanese or Chinese or whatever. And this is totally against the hood shit we normally talk about. Right. This is some other shit. It's fun. It's it a is. fun song. But it showed me immediately. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. They do get it. It's, yeah. it I, was, I, was not, I was not there yet. I didn't yeah. realize. I thought they were still talking about emptying the clip. Mm-mm. And they get it. Mm-hmm. Even if they even if they're not all the way there yet, I right. can see the potential that they get it. And as yeah. long as you have an artist, all of us know this. As long as you have an artist that's willing to play the game, and by the game I mean you understand that there's going to be sometimes you have to do things that are a little bit outside of your comfort zone, mm-hmm. and it's going to make you look a certain way to people who've supported you in the very beginning. But as long as you don't go against your integrity or whatever, right. you're going to be a star. And if you're willing to do something like that, you're willing. You're going to be a superstar. Well, it's almost like you're you're, you're not taking yourself so seriously because exactly. within the hood, there's like this over masculine thing where you can't, you know, you really can't appeal to audiences outside of your own. Right. But this is saying that they are, and I think they've been there for a while. I think that's why they have been on this bad and bo- the bad and bougie. But when have you seen them smile? So hard ever yeah. impress. You're right. At the end of the You're video, right. they all like, they're like cracking time. up. Like yeah, they're having a good ear to ear smile. It's when have great, you ever seen that? I was gonna say it's a great song. It's, it's fun Well I, so, well, Pharrell has a lot To do with that song You can tell You're right you're But right. just the fact That they went to Pharrell For right. a beat it, It's all of that right. like, You know what I'm it's saying like, They open. get it It's they being get open it. It's being open I was wrong Ooh, I was wrong Wow This has happened twice 2018 <laughs> I was wrong They get it Twice I, in one show I don't know that they will be Super successful from this point on But they get it And they have right. the potential to now Well I see And Cardi is, is doing the same thing Cardi yeah. is riding that wave Yes Cardi's going on tour With Bruno with Mars With Bruno Mars yeah. Good move for her She's when, intelligent She's move. out of there Yeah she's, she's out She's when, out she's, She is winning her I don't know what I told I told somebody on on social media. I said, "Yo, I hope y'all enjoyed Ratchet Cardi B while you had the yeah, chance. She's done. Yeah, she's going pop." And somebody tries, "Well, no, she's she was already a she already had white girls at her shows." I said, not "No, I'm not talking about white yeah. girls at her shows. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about Nick Jonas on stage with her. Right, exactly. And, That's different. Exactly. And she's also doing Spanish music too. Have you heard that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, so she's like she's, she's going sneaking back and re- oh, sneaking it. that in. Yeah. Like it's not it's not a game no more. Yeah, she's Dude, going back." The, uh, uh, the, that the Spanish version uh, I, I forget I can't even say What was the first hit now I don't, I don't know why I, I Bodak Yellow yeah, yeah Bodak Yellow The Spanish version of that right. shit Is so lit Dude <laughs> Did Kevin just say yeah. lit <laughs> He did say lit hey. <laughs> Yeah this is that a different show today. It does. Be honest, is admitted he's wrong and Kevin is lit. Every now and then you you, you gotta, you know, you gotta admit you're wrong. And every once in a while, the six foot eight guy gets lit. <laughs> get lit. Well, I'm spo- what's, why are you supposed to say lit? I'm no, too I old just, for lit. No, you know I, I just, to? no, no. Get Liddy in the city. Liddy. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Man, no, but that's I, I I love that. I love that for both of them. It's good to see it's good to see when it's like when when um when you know when to when keeping it real with no exactly. one to stop, right? Like you gotta exactly. know when to yeah. open up and, and allow for the opportunity. You guys have the opportunity to blast out of here. Mm. You need you got a chance to be in outer space. Yeah. But you're gonna keep it real and lose all the and opportunities. Lose all. Yeah. You know, it's I, not see, worth I don't it. see that in them. But see, I think they have, like you said, quality control. I think they have good Leadership that's been here before, yep. who's atta- you know coach. achieved success with with other artists, and that they are you know navigating them. I mean, they're making a lot of money. They are making a lot of money, and they're 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 just. I think the field is wide open because there's so much more that they can do. You know, mm-hmm. so shouts out to them. But speaking of social media, so be honest, you sent us a both of us um, a post that was found on. Malcolm Jamal Warner's page, but oh, actually, yeah. but actually was posted initially um, by speech from Arrested right. Development, right? Right. You want to talk? I us? don't have it. You don't have it. <laughs> I don't have it. I don't have it in the video. But. I have it. Let's pull it up because I want. I'm, I, it's in our. Um, we were looking. I guess this, you know, came from. Instagram. Talk about it, and then let me see if I can get it on the screen. Okay. So, all right. <laughs> you want to read it, or should I? You can. Okay. Let me. Uh... All right, so the post says. Oh wait, first, and this first was, one, we got to set it up though, because the, the post is 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 a is a caption going along with the picture that was taken from the Rock Nation brunch mm-hmm. during Grammy weekend with pretty much every rapper in that's that's relevant right now. There's Ooh. there's Jay Z, there's uh, Yo Gotti, there's Big Sean, there's Ti, Diddy, Swiss Beats. Um, 
and a bunch of other of their of their their teams involved. But DJ Cal is off to the side. Like there was a few people that was even cropped out because I know yeah. Pegasus is in there and you know other guys. But, mm-hmm. but the focus the focus of the caption right. around this picture was on the celebrities. Right. Right. right? Um, and what what speech said was. A group of so-called successful black men, minus DJ Khaled racially, who became rich and famous from perpetuating the worst black stereotypes to the ears and eyes of the whole planet, like drug dealing, pimping, murdering, and other black men, and disrespecting black women. I know making observations is being a hater. Cheers. Now, you got to read what Malcolm Jamal Warner Put when he posted this because speech has you know twenty thousand followers. We know speech is from Arrested Development, which was always a very African American black conscious group. That's they were always about that. So mm-hmm. it didn't surprise me that speech made that. Well, there's comment. still more. There's still more yeah, to it though. Uh, uh, can I read the yeah, bottom? Okay, read yeah. bottom. Okay, so he said, "Keep perspective." I listen to many of these brothers' art, and I respect certain things about them, but it is imperative that we don't lose sight of the simple truth. These men were congratulated by a white supremacist culture for degrading black men and women, portraying us as disposable as a cockroach within their lyrics. They taught and glorified the drug, pimp, prostitution, stripper, and gang game and led many impressionable people down a path that they have paid heavily for. While these successful dudes got paid, this is not a diss. It is a reminder that all that glitters ain't gold. True black power is not this. It's despite this. And there was actually one more comment that I wanted to down. If you if you scroll down on this, Janelle Monae, somebody somebody quoted her, so I'm not sure if this is actually a true Janelle Monae quote, but somebody mm-hmm. quoted her saying, time's up for harassment of any kind and time's up for the abuse of power. Because you see, it's not just going in on Hollywood. It's not just going on in Washington. It's right here in our industry as well. And just as we have the power to shape culture, we also have the power to undo the culture that does not serve us well. Mm. And that's from an art, uh, article. It looks like it's in a... Um, it was her? Culture. It was uh, what she said uh, at the Grammys. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, those were. How do you feel about? We'll, we'll get to Malcolm Jamal Warner's, but how do you feel about what Speech said, though, Kevin? What I mean, you read it, but what do you feel about it? Um. Well, I feel like. How do I want to say? Well, one, I, I can't hate on them either, and I, I do think it. I mean, no one can argue with the fact that they've portrayed an image that hasn't necessarily been that of a choir boy. Right. Right? They've definitely showed the street side, and and I think for a while, especially in hip-hop, you weren't cool unless you were on the wrong side of the tracks. Right? You had to be from the hood. You had to have sold dope or any gang or, you know, towed a gun. You had to uh, behave in a certain way in order to be considered cool. And Incredible. I, yeah, and I think that, that that definitely has influenced young boys to do the same thing. Or at least if they wanted to rap, they had to rap about that type of stuff mm-hmm. in order to be considered cool, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you were a young kid and you wanted to rap like Talib Kweli, you wasn't cool. You was whack off top because you wasn't rapping about toting guns. Right. So I there is some some credence to that, I think. Um but I don't know. I, I can't. I feel indifferent because I can't say like black people are the only culture that I am aware of that tends to shade or shit on each other because of their like like we're we're all pointing the holy f- finger at each other, mm-hmm. right? Um, I, I I never hear white people upset that mob wives are. Oh, you're making us look bad. You've done this to the culture. Right. Um, But in fairness, I'll also say a lot of those other cultures have acquired wealth because of the illegal activity that they were involved in. Right. They were able to rob those trains or sell those drugs or do whatever racketeering and, you know, whatever they did. They were able to participate in those activities and then to use that money to fund legitimate activities. And now their families don't have to work as hard. Right. That was some of the money that that was passed down. 
So for for those some of those guys in this picture didn't actually sell dope, right? But for the ones that really did mm-hmm. and legitimized their businesses and now their families don't have to work anymore, mm-hmm. I can't shit on that. I can't hate on that. Well, I I guess I wonder two things. Is it a is it the actual act? Because you're right, a lot you know from the Rockefellers, to, hell, the Kennedy, a lot of families that that we know from uh, that that did. You said Rockefeller. That's Jay Z. You mean Rockefeller? I said Rockefeller. Oh, okay. Rockefeller and Rockefeller. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The Rockefellers, which is probably why they named Rockefeller after that. It was. It is. Yeah, it was. So, no, I said it's because he rocks hoes and they rock fellas. Wow. Can we just give a shout out yeah. to Nasi? But you know what? That? Jay-Z okay, no, no. also said, Jay-Z also, uh, <laughs> Sorry, I got right, it. Just, like right, just a quick. He also said, um, take your drug money and buy the neighborhood. That's how you rinse it. Yeah, we heard we heard it, but <laughs> <laughs> he did. We we heard four four four. But right. but my thing is this. Okay, so it's one thing to have that history. It's another thing to glorify it, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't, you know. Granted, I don't listen to a lot of. I used to listen to pop all the time and pop rock, but I don't listen to a lot of heavy rock. So I don't know if white people are out there glorifying the deeds that they've done. I don't think the issue that speech I has think, I was. Think, you're, I didn't think about that until you said it, but I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think speech has a problem with the fact that they may have done something. I think the problem is they're praised for it. So when you talk about I'm in the kitchen doing this and I'm doing this and da da da, and yes, Jay Z has rinsed it now, but. There's plenty of albums before the rinsing had occurred. I think that's the problem. And I think that comes from an internal issue. Um, it's funny that you brought up Mob Wives because, I, you know, coincidentally, there aren't a lot of white fans watching Mob Wives. So it's us watching that and, and they're catering to us. Those, those women on that show, VH1, that whole reality slot is aimed at a black audience that wants to see foolishness. You know what I mean? So they brought in white girls to kind of do the same things that they had black girls already doing on Basketball Wives. You know what I mean? So there weren't a lot of white Basketball Wives. They did try to infiltrate them, but they didn't have the same kick because we just do that a lot better. So I think that the problem is that we don't ever want to acknowledge. And I'm not, I'm not 100% agreeing with speech, but my thing is that it's not glorified that way. Now we talk about I've heard the argument that there are movies that show gangster movies and things like that. Mm-hmm. That's still not the same. Music is powerful. I think music is the most powerful medium, period. So, are, are Italians making those movies? Right. I mean, that's a good thing, too. I don't, but, but then, I mean, there's, a, there's, a, there's like, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Because by the time black people get in control, we're like, well, it's white people behind the, the music label. But white people aren't telling you what to say in your raps. Like, I, there's no way you're going you're gonna to make me believe that Well, they're not, but they're, they're only paying telling. for certain things. Well, no, they're paying for things that sell. That's what the community right. wants to hear. So we, we are, the, the pressure that black boys got, Kanye talked about that. I, he didn't get on for years and years because he wasn't the kind of guy that people saw as a rapper. He didn't come from that background. He didn't do that. That's a problem that we have to acknowledge. We have to take responsibility and accountability for and say, Yes, this has been our culture. Now, that's no one put that on us. Yes, white people have done wrong things, but white folks don't talk about what they do. They hide it. We like to share and we like to glorify it and make it right some kind of way. And and that's a problem because it puts pressure on young people to do the wrong thing as opposed to the right thing. And I think when you have I love to see the 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 way that Jay-Z has matured. We went from saying everything is about money, cash, and hoes to now saying that you should, you know, buy the block and all that stuff. But that's that's a twenty year maturation process that yeah. you know, kids listening to him years ago didn't get the same message. So I think speech was talking about the message that has been celebrated more so than their personal experience. And I think that he's saying that whites have chosen to celebrate blacks that are doing this because there are a lot of black people doing great things that we just don't hear about. We don't celebrate. You know, Diddy is someone that people like watching because he's flashy and he's fly and he's, you know, he's talking a little he's bit. Over of, the top. He's over the top. But, I, but people like that. So someone else that's doing good things and doing philanthropic things and actually out in the communities, we're not selling, we don't want to do that. Arrested Development, I can't tell you. Uh, did you hate their songs? No. Did you hate Arrested Development? No, they ain't no. good. And you know what? Arrested Development was 
at the time, they were like mainstream MTV. They, they were, were MTV but it took, Spring it Break. Took a, it was hard. For, it was also difficult for them to do that. And then if you just look at speech talks about he speaks his truth which I which I respect and I like I said I was so surprised that I was we we know that about them because that's what they've always stood for but if you look at on on Instagram there's 20,000 people following speech because people don't really want to hear that they <laughs> right. really want to hear the other stuff you know what I mean so I think right. I think we have to take accountability for what we what we choose, what we pick and choose to celebrate. I think that is something that we can take responsibility for as a culture and say, hey, we need to make sure if this is what, how we want to be represented, mm-hmm. we are responsible for making sure that those, you know, the things that are positive get get pushed. Now, I do think there are a lot more positive people getting, we're celebrating, especially now since women have taken over um, with <laughs> Ava DuVernay. And a lot of the stories that we see now and the, and the, and the, the, the television shows that are, that are doing well are not ones that, that celebrate our demise, but uplift us. So I think right. we're moving into a good place, but we can't ignore that, you know, what, their albums were initially about that got them to that place. But you know what? And I think now I, I love the fact that in the culture it's becoming it's becoming cool to be conscious, right? And and it's it's conscious and cool. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because these the the Jay Zs and the Ti's and 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 the, all those guys that talked about the their misdealings in the past now they're they're giving you the right stuff. Now that they've you know, woke up and they've made yeah. millions of dollars and they've been able to, but they're still maintaining their cool though. They not they not all of us like some guys. Some guys go completely lame and it's just like because eh, you preaching. I don't but think no, most they're maintaining their cool and lame. still giving you the 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 good or still leading the youth in a positive way. Ti's last album was all about yeah. uh, social injustice, right? And, and, and instead of it being about selling dope and drugs, it is like this is wrong. How did that, how that album do? It. We got to be in a. Community. I don't think. I mean, I, was it was it celebrated? Was that album celebrated? I don't, I don't think, think people so. really gave a fuck about that album. No, sadly. Yeah, I don't think it got a lot of. A lot I mean, realistically, well, is, that's what we're saying. Uh, and you know what? I, I'll give you that, but it wasn't. I, I'll say this: it's a culture <laughs> shift. <laughs> it's a culture shift. That doesn't mean that everything like Black Panther right now. I, I can't wait. I've been waiting for this. It doesn't matter happen. if this movie is bad. It doesn't even matter. No, it was. There's no way it can be. It's, no, it's going to be supported there's if it's no bad, it good, be. whatever. This going to people going to see it more than once. I, I think, think. it's going to be. First of all, it can't be bad with uh, Chadwick Boseman and Angela Bassett and and Forrest Whitaker. I mean, the cast. Mm. It's almost like. No, it can be still be bad. It cannot. No, it no, can't. No, it could. There's been some really bad movies with great cast. But this one, it won't matter if it's bad. No, I don't think so. Not like that. Nah, big think... names, but great actors. Like, this, it's not just big names. Like, I remember there was a Valentine's Day movie that had, like, every right. A-list person. It, it was sucked. horrible. But, yeah. but, they, but a lot of those people are not. Some people are popular because they're popular, not mm-hmm. because they're, like, Angela Bassett is just a great actress. She can't. You know, I, she's popular, but most, but because she's a great actress, like right. there are other people that are just the person of the moment. You know what I mean? Right. But this is like actually solid. Like Forrest Whitaker is a freaking genius. Like you know, right. you just can't miss with that. But I agree with I agree with Kevin. Like it's it's beautiful to me because it's uniting people and it's something that's positive. Like you know, you see the a king is born. Like you see something positive and it's something that's still cool and relevant. And we have a hard time being cool and relevant and positive. Mm-hmm. If it's positive, we don't really want to fuck with it. <sighs> and if it's negative, you know. And I think I don't know. I'm I'm just speaking for. Like thinking of when we were growing up, if someone comes and they've they've experienced everything, like someone say you smoked all the crack, you know, <laughs> slept with all the guys, and then you come back and say, "Woo, you don't need to do any of that. That's not cool." It's Anybody like well, you, to that you went and right. did all that stuff out. So when when, when Jay Z and people like that say, "Oh, you guys shouldn't use the money phone. You shouldn't do that," but it's like, dude, you you did all that stuff, and now that you're, and I, I love what he's saying, but. I'm just saying to the to the people that are young that haven't had the chance to have the maturing process that he's been afforded. Mm-hmm. It's not fair to us to try to force your mentality, your 48 year old mentality, on a 20 year old without acknowledging where he's at. You know what I mean? You got to acknowledge where he's at. You kind of contradicting, I think, because you said at one point you want to. We have to celebrate the things that are are good, and we have to like downplay or. 
talk bad, I guess, about the things that aren't. We can't celebrate those things anymore. But then you're saying, well, but at the same time, Jay-Z, you've been through this. But you know what? I'm saying his example. I'm saying his example because it's like people act like this is who Jay-Z has always been. And it's not. You know what I mean? And, And in fact, to your point... He was more celebrated. I think 444 was, you know, celebrated because it was done. It was it was very uh, clever and artsy. But most of, we, we got to know Jay-Z through, you know, Money Cash Hoes. That's the Jay-Z. Big that, Pimpin'. Big, big exactly. Pimpin'. Like, with this, not the man that's like, oh, it's cool to be a father and a good husband and all that. So, yeah. so that's not how we got to know him. And I love what he's saying, but I'm just saying that, we have to understand why young people aren't doing that same thing. He's had a chance to, he's been granted a life that not many, a very small percentage of people could even aspire to. So the fact that he's been able to get to this place is great. I was just, I was telling Kevin, I love Will Smith's perspective because Will Smith was never that guy that mm-hmm. sold drugs or did any of that stuff. He's always kind of been the kind of corny Cool, but Will Smith real person. used to Will Smith used to throw his holy finger around too, and he would he would shame other rappers for cursing. Mm. I don't know if you remember that. I didn't remember that. A lot that. of people I don't even remember that Will Smith used to rap. Right. Well, I, well, I remember that, but and, <laughs> I didn't know he shamed other rappers. He did. Did he right. shame yeah. them or did yeah. he no, say no. he shamed him and, them? Okay. And Eminem had a thing did. at yeah. one point because Eminem, when oh, Eminem wow. came out, Eminem was very, he used oh, a lot of curse God, words. Yeah. Every other word. And he was like, <laughs> Will Smith said he don't have to curse to sell records. Well, I do. So fuck him and fuck, fuck you, you too. too right. like, that yeah, was but that the doesn't line. mean that he's shaming him because no, he didn't. No, Will Smith, Will Smith did. The reason why he oh. said that line is because Will Smith yeah. was doing the Bill Cosby. Of, yeah, he was very outspoken yeah. about cursing and, and images and rap and stuff like that. Okay. Hmm. But I think what's dope is that Will Smith also has maintained his cool, his cooler, confident attributes, yeah. and still give people that knowledge where it's not so lame to be a good guy no more. And to me, he does it in a way. I didn't know that he shook, shook he did the 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 condescending way before. Maybe he's matured and now it's changed. But when I listen to the messages that he put on Instagram, he recently joined. And if you guys are not following him, you definitely need to follow him because he put he he just he has advice that comes from a genuine place. And it's actually, it feels like we're all watching the the movie that he did. Um, what was the movie that he had with, uh, that was about the guy that... Seven Pounds, Pursuit of Happiness. Pursuit of Happiness. It feels like yeah. you're watching Pursuit of Happiness every day if you watch him, if you tune into him on Instagram because his advice is very much from a place of just, this is life. You know what I mean? Like I still feel like when I listen to Jay-Z, it's still very f- much from a, a rapper, braggadocious place. Like before he was pimping and he had hoes that were in essence. Now he has, I brag different, my wife's Beyonce. Well, I, you know, unless you got a supermodel wife, you probably can't relate to that. But, I, you know, so I, I just, so it still is d- divisive to me. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's still coming from a, now I'm here, you're still not there. You you can't get where I'm at. Cool. Uh, but it doesn't work to kind of bring in, it still works to divide people into, I don't know, maybe it's. Well, Kevin, Kevin said it earlier. And the problem is that you're right. Jay-Z is talking, you know, like the the mobsters or whatever, they legitimize themselves. But Jay-Z hasn't given anybody a handout or a plan to legitimize himself. Those those gangsters are, you know, ex-gangsters or whatever. They have a legitimate business to hand down to people now. What business do the ex-drug dealers have to hand down to someone? Yeah. Because they're still talking shit. They're not handing anything down. They still want to be the boss. They still want to be the kingpin. Yeah. They still want to be on top. Jay-Z is not willing to give anybody a key to anything because he still wants to use that key for himself. So there's no way to legitimize that. We have to go the way the route Jay-Z did. So Jay-Z said, now we do this. Okay, so I need to sell drugs for 10 years. Yeah. And then, you know what I'm saying, go out of Get town. Get chicken in the game, wearing my chain. Right. In order to do then. that, here's, here's the formula. <laughs> Jay-Z gave right. me the formula. Right. There's no legitimized business that Jay-Z's giving anyone the keys to. None, none of these, from what I understand, none of the people are. None of the people who have done that and are now giving back, they're just giving back. They're not opening really any doors Because in to order to do that, in. you have to literally say, I was wrong. I made a lot of mistakes. Right. Right. I did this wrong. I don't want you to do what I did. It looked good when I did Big Pimpin' and I did this, but it, it really wasn't right because look what I did. Now, Jay-Z may be at that place because we definitely have seen him open up more than he's ever opened up before right. with this album. But in order to do that, you really have to take yourself off of that platform of I'm the untouchable. And that's not something that hip-hop is really about. Hip-hop is really about bragging. I'm better than you. How I'm many challenging of, how you. How many of his... 
it, relatives or Beyonce's re- relatives work at Title? I don't know. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Like that's what J.P. Morgan Chase does. Yeah. I'm bringing in all my nephews, my cousins, my brothers, mm-hmm. my sisters. We're gonna th- this that's we're legitimizing our money because we're all now here. We're right. you, you could have found us in the streets a few years ago, <laughs> but now we got the kids and the women folk yeah. in here working behind these desks because we're the executives and all these people work for us. And not only that, they're telling because I I've, I tell this story all the time. I remember being in college at the University of Oklahoma and fathers going with their sons at 23 to help pick out a wedding ring because we know that family builds wealth. Oh, you want to go get a bunch of baby mamas and be cool. Well, you want to be cool and have all the hoes. You're going to get about three or four and pregnant. Have a, like that. That's not, that's not what we're, you, you got to go back and right those wrongs. You can't just say, oh, now I'm here and we don't do the money phone. That's not cool anymore. There's a huge gap. Like, wait a minute. I thought we were on the money cash hoes. You know, no, 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 not on that no more. Now get on. Okay. What, how do you bring them with you? Well, you know what? First thing I think in, in bringing them with you, I think that, Firstly, hip hop is getting a little bit more balance, right? Mm-hmm. Like I wouldn't I don't need Migos to do 444 and I <laughs> right. don't need JC, I don't need Jay-Z to do what Migos are doing. Right. No more, right? So I'm glad that the two can exist in their own lane and cuz when I want to hear Migos, when I'm in a Migos kind of mood, that's right. what comes on, right? right? When I'm in a Kendrick Lamar kind of mood, that's what comes on. Right. Right? But there's a little bit more balance to the meal than there was recently. Right. Right. I, and, and But you know what? Furthermore, I'm going to say this. In terms of, of title, that platform is owned by artists, number one. Now, I don't know if it's his family members, but it is owned by artists, and they actually pay the highest royalties out of all of the other companies. Kevin, look at the screen. Guess who that is? <laughs> That's title staff. Right. That's title staff. Now, I don't see not Nan. I think that might have been, I need to check Snopes or something like that, because I think that was from... Before? Yeah, I think that was like when they bought it or something. Okay, well, I don't see not Nan Knowles Carter in that <laughs> in that, in that place. I don't know what they family look like. One oh, like Michael Rappaport right come there. On. Come on. That looks a, just like Mac. I thought it was, <laughs> actually. There's some Sally's. No. That's, that's, there's a, I see 50 white people taking a picture with Beyonce and Jay-Z. There's a Sanjeet and up can front. We say, can, <laughs> I see a lot of... There's, did you but, just say that? I did. And the, oh my God! As Becky's, I see Becky's. Okay. I see Michael Rappaport. Kevin, can we Same can we acknowledge? <laughs> there's there's an idea that when I get to a certain level, I associate now. Mm-hmm. With the non-blacks That's what I'm saying right. He's saying that in his music That's right. what he's telling you All those raps in 444 are about, about the hood being diversified And now I'm going to go back And I'm going to buy beside his wife I'm, I'm just saying J.P. Morgan Chase Used to kill people <laughs> All of them They used to run liquor Whatever You know what But they legitimized And they brought everybody in But you know what Okay so here's Because in America We got a whole lot of ills Right And we can talk about The the racist policies Of of redlining And and unfair uh, uh, Payment practices And you know All those types of things And And Black people may be fighting Against racism But we're still participating In a lot of classism Oh, we are definitely yeah. participating we're in classism. We're still participating in a lot of classism. And I think even what what you were talking about earlier with your question from uh from uh, from whomever that person might be. Right. The um the the ring debate. Can he afford a $3500 ring and da 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 da? That that materialism is right. really classism. Let's just it call is. it what it, it is. It is. It, well, you know what? It became a way for us to um, when there's when you when you have a group of people that have been told that they're not they're not as good as right, then internally that group starts to struggle to find well we're not all of us are bad but I'm better than you right so then it becomes an internal struggle because and that's why you have people that are black that say oh no I only I you know I moved to a different neighborhood now I don't live around the blacks I actually was in a conversation with a lady mm-hmm. and I thought it was weird that someone would say that today in Atlanta. And she said, I don't want to live around black. Oh, girl, I live with white folks. I don't want to live with black folks. So that, there's that mentality there. And it's only because you throw a bunch of people into a, a, a group that says you're obscure. They're fighting to who's less obscure. So, oh, no, I make more money. So I'm definitely a good black. Like, you know what I mean? There's that, there's that idea that if I make money and I associate with white people, I can somehow be better than the 
other blacks that are not. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's human nature when you would do any group like that. You're going to have people try to start an internal struggle for to try to find their place in that in that group, right? So, but I think that's a big part of if we look at of hip hop, that's what's been done. It's like I'm cooler than you, I'm richer than you, my girls are prettier, I'm better. And I don't see that same angst in non-black people. You know, you don't see you, you, there's always a level of of machismo well, white with people males. do it they're they're rich whites and they're poor whites and the rich ones call them trash it's called poor ones trash they do i don't know that it's the same type of of fight because they don't have the same type of they they don't have the same insecurities that black people have built in period i don't mm-hmm. think so yes you do have people called but some of that's just matter of fact like well they're poor and i'm rich but we're like we're all poor but i'm trying to prove that i have two more cents than you i remember when i was growing up my mom said the the poor blacks are the worst <laughs> period when you get to a certain level they just totally distance themselves but it's the people that all my mom earns you know, thirty five thousand a year, and your mom earns thirty eight. But you guys think you're so much better than us, and you, and that's just foolishness. And that's what a lot of us. That's what that struggle has been. And to me, hip hop is the place that 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 celebrates that angst. It's almost you know? like it's almost like what I said earlier about women wanting to make three more thousand. Almost. It seems not really. Like, I can, but, but you know, I, it's I, not I, really. It's now, now that you're saying that, oh, I, now. I see a little it's bit almost, more. Of, isn't it funny how they you always put, agree? Put it on that plane, right? I mean, but let me be for real. Ain't none of us in one percent. No, so not what, even what, close. Like, what are we not arguing even, about? Right the 10%. Whether you can afford a thirty-five hundred dollar <laughs> ring or five hundred dollar shoes, all of that is nothing. Nothing, right? All of that is nothing. Well, most, We're most still not in the one percent. What most importantly, when you have to do all that to prove, right. You've already lost. You've already lost. Yeah. So yeah, you know, yeah. what I mean, you, yeah. you, you've already lost. So I mean, this 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 argument, I, I you know. I agree. We didn't even get a chance to get into Malcolm Jamal Warner's point, but I agree with Speech Look it up, to it. Look it up on yeah, Instagram. Definitely. We'll post it on our, our social media. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and shouts out to him for, for being strong enough. Because I think we need all types of voices. You may not agree with him, but right. you need to hear what he has to say. You know what I mean? You may, you may agree. You may totally disagree with Speech and totally disagree with Malcolm Jamal Warner and totally agree with... You know, me, with me, you may, may you may agree maybe. with me. If you ain't talking about money, I don't understand. Right, because like I don't understand <laughs> the, the language of, of people with short right. money. Right, like I don't all understand that kind of, broke niggas. Yeah, like that. You you may you may feel that way, but at least at least know your opponents. You know their argument, and I think that's even with people. I was talking to a group of people that were saying, "I don't, I'm not watching the State of the Union address." Like you can't not know what the other side is saying and disagree with them. That's if yeah. only a fool says that. Like, how do you know you disagree with President if, Trump? If you watch that State of the Union, and I know we got to wrap up in a second, but if you watch that State of the Union address and you didn't know anything about Trump's past mm-hmm. or who he was, it was amazing. He said all the right things. He said all the right things. He now, we know, we, we know the nuance. Right, right. So it's a little I, different. Right. But and if you were to watch lies. that with no context, right. he said all of the right things. With no context, okay. The fact that people were not willing to even listen to it was bothersome to me. Because even though I know Donald Trump says a lot of crazy, crazy stuff. That he cannot at, back up. At some point, at some point, we have to either get him out of there right. or we got to start listening so we can figure out how we can work this into something. You know what I'm saying? It, it can't just be we're sitting on our hands for the rest right. of the four years. And I'm going to not call him my president, but just not say anything about it. That's, that's foolish. We either got to get him out of here or we got to right. figure out how this is going to work. I, I right. agree with you. We got to do something. But I thought it was hilarious that people were actually playing <laughs> old Obama speeches, like <laughs> like Obama reruns <laughs> in place hilarious. of... Um, yeah. Who, who, who did yeah. that? Uh, that was on a few oh, different so, yeah, networks yeah. where we're playing. No, ABC didn't do it. Of course not. No. not CNN didn't do it and Fox didn't do no, it. They no, they didn't do oh, okay. it. There are other yeah. networks besides The Nigga Network? Which network? Uh, oh, my Which network? Here we go. Is it, is it, on that hey, network. Like, like my... Uh, a uh, reputable tire shop. Yeah, I got I got some advice though. I don't like to Go leave I don't like to leave people without some advice oh because of our conversation God. earlier. I was thinking while we were on the show. Okay. So like I don't want to just leave ladies out there with the gender gap thing and they have nothing to to aim towards. Ladies clutch your purses right. <laughs> now. No, I'm just saying cuz you know we talked about the mediocrity right or whatever. Mm-hmm. I think that the problem is that women aren't necessarily so mad that they're making less. They're just mad that he's making more. So that's like it's almost like snitching. And I want to incorporate the hood <laughs> idea. For women y'all need to just Stop snitching because you know what happens to snitches. <laughs> Kevin almost said it. 
<laughs> we all know the rules. Okay, hey, okay. Mean, stop, I'm, lady, I'm, stop snitching. I'm, I'm giving you some advice. Hold on, don't don't shut I'm me down here. I'm making an executive decision. Don't, don't shut me down. Don't shut me down. No, no, we're not gonna. Do I want to provide we're some not advice. Do it. No. I can't leave them empty-handed. Uh, you have done enough. Take this with you. Stop snitching. It, and I'll, uh, you, you know, tune in again, please. Please tune in. <laughs> please tune in next week for more music, love, life. Please, t- I can't make you turn your mic off because it's you're the producer. Why do you Why do you want me to turn my mic off? I want off? the mic Yo. off. Thank oh, you. God. Subscribe. Music, love, life. Life, life, life. Subscribe. Subscribe. Jesus Christ. Are you serious?